So let's see what Matt's doing. Oh, Matt is filling in this piece here. All right, I will get you food. I will get you food. I'm uh, much, much happier now than what I was five minutes ago. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt, and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Well, we've got to love that it is finally warming up enough here on Kent Island that after a long day's work, we can sit out in the Vikings cockpit on the flybridge and enjoy a beer or a gin and tonic while watching the sunset right in front of us on the beautiful Chesapeake Bay. And this week, I'm sure you were hoping that we would let you in on what's going on with the dagger boards because we did leave you on a cliffhanger last week. But truth be told, we're still kind of figuring that out. We haven't progressed into making any of the next ones yet just because there is actually not any lumber stores here on the island. Plus, we don't have the right vehicles for it. So we've kind of been like really relying on friends to get us over to Annapolis to the Home Depot. So in the meantime, we've just been working on some other small projects which actually leads me to this episode because there's a number of things we've been working on for the past three months which are just like so small that I didn't want to put them into a video themselves but now that they've been progressing a bit more and I can add a few more segments to them or I realize that this is kind of it there is no more progression I decided that this week we're going to kind of do a mismatch on just random things that we've been up to on the catamaran for the past three months because the dagger boards, as you can tell, are pretty much like real time, so we are quickly catching up to how things are going. So enjoy that, and then next week, hopefully we'll have more information for you on those. Oh, and one other very important thing that I forgot to mention, a few people had asked in the previous video, is why did Max Cruz add the dagger board cases or have them provided as part of the kit? And actually they do, it's just that we told them that we wanted to do it ourselves, we wanted a big project, and we almost decided to build the dagger boards themselves as well, thankfully. We let the professionals handle that, um, but we did decide that we wanted to do the cases ourselves just because we wanted to like take on something big ourselves because I guess we thought the rest would be easy. I don't know. But anyway, they do offer that as part of the kit. It's just something that we decided that we wanted to do ourselves. Right now, today, there is about a foot and a half, maybe a eh, foot, foot and a half of snow that fell overnight. You can see my breath. It is freezing cold in here. I think the therm thermometer was showing like 31 or something like that inside the tent right now. But as long as I keep moving, it's not that bad. Today's project is this little area under here, the shelf, and with this chamfer panel where this curved piece is filling that void in and kind of uh, just trying to make it look finished through here. Um, the original plan was just to fare this and keep that curve, but just doesn't really like the looks of it. So we are going through and kind of fixing that. You know, I'll show you how that's going to be done. So you can see right now kind of what it looks like underneath there. This is all glassed in. Um, and you can see we're yeah, glassed around this chamfered piece here. Basically, these little inserts were cut down, roughly cut, as you can see. Just kind of a little, little edge to match this profile. And what we do is those just kind of pop into place. And then they do hit pretty flush. And how we'll do that is when it's time to actually bond these pieces into place. Uh, what we'll do is we will screw or adhere like a, a flat edge to this. And then, as you can see, we can push in and pull out to get it. So this piece is sitting in there completely flush. It's going to be flush with this area. 
Once these are bonded into place, then we will go through and fill in the seam, put a, a layer of glass, fiberglass over the top of this, do a cove and slight glass around here. Again, probably one layer because these are not structural at all. They're just purely cosmetic. And uh, um, go through it, and then once that's fared in, this will be then one big solid piece. Now, this kind of, I guess, gives you an idea of what that eventually will look like then. Um, so it'll just be just a little slight overhang on that shelf, and it'll match the hole shape here, coming basically up along that hall, and never know that there was that void there. shower area we're of course not going to have a headliner at all so nothing covering the overhead area so we need to make this flush so we can then Jess can come in and spend all of her days Yay. fairing and sanding our shower area so trying to get it at least a good base to fill in this the rest of it will be filled in with that lightweight fairing compound and stuff um, but I want to get as much of it filled in as possible so we're not a using a ton of fairing compound and B you know it's it's easier for her to do as well when they've got a good base there. So just putting these pieces into place, did the same thing kind of to fill in mm -hmm. that uh, chamfer piece, that, that edge over here where these two flanges come in. And that is, so what I did basically here is this is now level. So it's running parallel with this and the other sides as well. And then what we'll do is I'll round this over this little edge over and then we'll be able to fare that in smoothly as well. It's going to be a ton of work, and it's not even pointed at me. <sighs> this GoPro keeps getting dirtier every day. One other thing I did want to point out in this area, um, bulkhead 4 leading into the shower, is that we discussed before how we wanted to cut this area open more and just kind of give a better flow between the two areas. And so because we took away from bulkhead four, which is fairly structural, we did go back and add layers of unidirectional fiberglass. And because we did so many layers, there is quite a difference um, on these edges. So that will have to be blended out. We're gonna need much more filler um, fairing compound here to keep a smooth transition all the way down. And granted, this is inside of a closet cabinet. Won't see it a ton, but we still don't want to make it noticeable. And although it will need to be cleaned up more, we did go back and put the rope of unidirectional, like you've seen when we first started putting these bulkheads in, and put that within um, the trough that Matt created by routing out some of the foam, and then also brought that into this section here. So this is super strong now. I'll have to go back and fill that a little bit more too.
After we arrived back from Arizona, it was time to continue our work in the master vanity, an area we could easily close off in heat when the external temperatures were still just above freezing. We decided the best cabinet layout for us would be three storage shelves just above the sink and two above the toilet with the bottom one giving us access to plumbing which would run along the chamfered panel. On the outboard side, we'd only have two narrow but very long shelves, a spot that would be great for makeup, lotions, and other everyday toiletry items. Well, I'm trying to make this as smooth as possible because Jess is going to have to come back here and fair all of this. Um, what we're doing is, besides the, the cove that's going in place, we're using just one layer of glass on either side. Again, these are just shelves, so they're not structural at all to the, the strength of the boat. Um, but we do need it strong enough to be able to support whatever we're going to put in here. But uh, So one layer of glass is going on top and bottom and then using that peel ply over the top of it so then when we pull this off it makes a really nice smooth surface with a, a good transition there um, between areas and then it requires the least amount of sanding and the least amount of fairing uh, so she, she hopefully can get through this very quickly um, finish it off as you can see she started up here got a lot of that done already or at least kind of roughed in at that point and then we'll finish these and we can get the cupboards then <laughs> if we can at least check one thing off our list so far. I am coming to you from the Hall of Fame two, which means that we have already filled up the sail locker on our starboard side with all of the names of our patrons who have been here since the beginning. And now it is time to move into a brand new hole. You can see all this open real estate I've got behind me, but we do have the names of our first group of patrons, our most recent ones going up on the wall here. And if you are new to the Hall of Fame, these are our forward sail lockers and we're putting all of our patrons' names up on here in Sharpie marker, which we're going to then like gloss over with a clear epoxy so that we're always going to be able to see the names of the amazing people that let us get to this point and put out our videos every week. So if you are interested in getting your name permanently up on this wall and getting amazing other benefits like early releases on videos that are ad-free and sponsored-free, getting uh, bonus videos of real-time updates of what we're up to in the tent, on a weekly basis. You can get live chats and we just ordered new stickers for our sticker packs which have the new boat design on it. So lots of great benefits for our patrons if you want to become one. I've got a link in the description box below and if you want to click the link here. So just check that out and hopefully we'll see your name up here too. You guys may have seen in previous episodes where Jess had to climb into this transom area through that hatchback there, all the way down, shimmy her way down here to glass in it. Oh, your hair's all dusty. <laughs> um, the reason why we didn't cut in openings or hatches at that point was uh, we didn't know this is like a, a separate skin that goes over the top of the bulkhead and we didn't know until it was in place exactly how it was going to be lined up. Now that it's in place and now that we've got a bunch of other projects done around this area, it's time to actually cut in and open up that hatch. What it is is just a piece of MDF, basically cut where our, our size is going to be. And what we're doing is we're going to use a router to cut this out. It should make the smoothest um, edge that we possibly could have around here. So it requires the least amount of fairing, the least amount of filling. 
um, to make this look good and make it look like it came that way from the factory. What I'm using with the, the router is a down cut bit. So it, it uh, spiral cut and it cuts down. That will cut through this first layer of glass and uh, actually the first layer of the glass and the ball cut them too. Then we'll cut out the foam and then I'm using a deep uh, spiral cut, up cut then, to cut through that last little bit. Um, so there's gonna be multiple passes around here. And how I'm gonna do it with this hatch is just screw through here and screw it level to this base. And then we'll cut around it, go around it um, with the router. Once we remove this, this is much easier to fare out the part that's gonna be the hatch, the part that actually opens up when we're sitting level down on the table instead of trying to do it up here. So that's the reason why I'm actually screwing into this part, uh, that part that's gonna be cut out, because we'll go through, fill that in, um, fare that out, and re-gel coat it, and then you'll never know that there's scruples. So that is the project for today. Make a lot of dust. The nice part too is this edge here is perfectly level. So all I got to do is level this and it should run right parallel with that line then. There's an oopsie. I uh, wandered slightly on this corner, and but everything else turned out really, really well. I used uh, an eighth inch bit, uh, the spiral bit is eighth inch. So I should be able to finish that edge round both sides over, and it's gonna be a perfectly spaced. That's the reason why I'm using this, not using like a jigsaw. I'd be able to get a, hopefully, a perfectly 90 degree cut then, um, and it's, properly spaced and all the way around as well so I don't have to try to sand it back or cut it back or anything like that. So I ended up having to use the jigsaw, use the router to cut the initial um, edge in there, but nothing I could do was even using like large roto zip um, and extended ones that I bought, uh, I still couldn't get the depth needed. And when I did, there was no support on it, um, so it would wander around anyway. I ended up having to use the jigsaw, and unfortunately that made now a fairly nasty edge. So, so we gotta go through now and try to fix these corners, and can't really tell from this angle, but what I hate about using the jigsaw for something like this is, um, it ends up cutting at an angle. So it's not a perfect 90 degree like what I want. So we'll have to sand this down and clean up this edge to give myself a 90 degree there. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll try something different on the other side now. Uh, use a plunge cut circular saw that I have. One of them's very small but horribly inaccurate. The one that's incredibly accurate is too large to use along this edge here. So it's I don't know exactly what to do here uh, to make this work better. Um, yeah. So, it's just more sanding, fairing, filling than what I wanted to do. I thought it was going to come out pretty smooth. <laughs> So with the outer edge being pretty good, I was able to use this flush cut bit 
uh, see here, and actually climb inside and go around and use that as my guide, my edge on it. Uh, and it worked actually really well. So this is much, much better than what it was. I'm uh, much, much happier now than what I was five minutes ago. One other thing I had the chance to do over this winter was get out and see a little more of Kent Island, and that was by moonlighting as a chicken tender. Pun totally intended. Our friend Tucker's family are caretakers on a farm just a few miles away, and while they escaped the cold to enjoy some warm Florida weather, they needed a hand tending to the animals at the house. That included feeding and taking care of their dog, Gunner. Go potty, Gunner. Potty. giving attention to their adorable Siamese coon, Mishka. And also taking care of their flock of chickens, brood of ducks, and two very friendly turkeys. Twice a day, I would drive to the house to feed them and collect eggs. The mornings had them most excited because they were being let out of their pen, but I enjoyed the beauty of my afternoon visits more. Hi, Gunner. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Are you ready to go out? Are you ready to go out? Is it afternoon feeding time? Did I get you guys excited? <laughs> All right, I will get you food. I will get you food. I would ask that none of you jump in here while I'm doing this, please. Say, please behave. Hey, no, 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 no. Out. Out, guys, out. And... Looks like we've got some afternoon eggs. I already collected this morning, but there's one, two, three, four, five, and one brooder. Do you have an egg for me? Since things were cold and it was hard to get a full day of work completed inside the tent anyway, it was really nice having something else to occupy my time and see other areas of the island we call home. Let me to pieces, yeah, I need it Won't you bend them all?